Hello my loves, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. It is Tuesday evening and I'm about to settle down to do some reading. I have a new hot drink to try, which I'm slightly concerned about. So I have, I filled this up far too much, but I have a spiced chai. Now, I only discovered last year, last winter, when I was working as a barista that I like chai. I had never tried it before, but I did like chai. Um, so I decided to buy some for when I want something different from tea or coffee. But it smells very different to the chai that I tried. <laughs> it smells very floral compared to what I've tried before, so I don't know if I'm going to like it. I have put a whole bunch of cinnamon on top because I like cinnamon. Did we try it? Uh, I don't even know if this is cool enough. Okay, well that was a mouthful of cinnamon. I mean, it's not bad. I need something to mix in the cinnamon with because I've just got a layer on top. It's not bad, but it does taste very, very different. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> I am just about to settle down to read and I'm about to start reading Mad Ship by Robin Hobb, which is over 900 pages. So you're going to be seeing me mention this book many, many times over the next two weeks I'm aiming for. I'm hoping to have this finished by the end of next week, but we shall see how that goes because of course I do still have my uni reading, which is this equally large book. I did actually read a lot yesterday, but I just didn't mention it in the vlog at all because one, I hadn't started it yet, but also because I did a bit of a blunder in that I thought I only had a 40 page novel to read, like one of the really short ones in here. But then I realised it was actually over 200 pages and I had to read that by today. So I spent all of yesterday evening just reading that book, which is another reason why I didn't end up giving any updates on that, but yes. It's currently about half past nine at night and I, this evening, scheduled in the Tolkien Along live show on Instagram. Me and Beth did a live show for the Fellowship of the Ring. So because I had that planned, I didn't have anything planned for before or afterwards, which means that I do have some spare time this evening, which is rather lovely. So I shall be starting this huge thing. This is the second book in the Life Ship Traders trilogy. The first book, Ship of Magic, I talked about countless times, I think last month. But in that book, we are in a world where live ships exist, which are quite literally ships that are alive. But to awaken, they have to have three generations of one family die on its decks. One of our main characters, Althea, is expecting to inherit one of these live ships. And we also follow a whole bunch of other characters, one of them being a pirate who wants a live ship for himself and quite a lot of members of Althea's family. And it's this whole political story, very slow moving fantasy book. The fantasy is kind of in the background, it is very much a political story, but it was very, very interesting, very depressing. <laughs> there was not one happy moment in those 800 pages. And I'm hoping this picks up a bit in terms of that because I, I'm i not feeling slumpy, but I'm very aware of how much I have to read at the minute. And I think if this is dragging me down for the next two weeks, I'm going to feel it. I have worked out that I need to read an average of 64 pages a day of this to read it within two weeks, but I'm already behind because that included yesterday in which I did not read any of it. So give or take 64 pages, probably a bit more now, but that seems manageable. Whether I will manage it or not is a different matter. I will be aiming to it though. I am on quite a strict schedule when it comes to reading. So I am treating it like a, you need to read this by this day. I have deadlines on myself. <laughs> But yes, I did just want to kickstart this vlog and I'm about to cozy up, light some candles, all that good stuff and do some reading. <laughs> Why do I really struggle with Thursdays? This happened in my last vlog. <laughs> it's now Thursday, Thursday evening, and I currently have my laptop set up for a live show because I'm taking part in Michelle's birthday live show in like an hour or so. It's currently on, so I am watching it, or at least I will be when I'm not doing an update. But yes, I am preparing for that. And by preparing, I mean I'm just 
sat waiting. <laughs> but I did just want to pop in and give you a little bit of an update because I just hit 20,000 subscribers. <laughs> I can't even fathom that amount of people. That is ridiculous. And people keep sending me comparisons being like, this is the size of this football stadium or this music theater or this concert hall. And it's just, it's wild to think about. So I am honestly kind of gobsmacked, but thank you all so, so much for sticking with me, supporting me, deciding you like me enough to click that button. And it's, oh wow, it's honestly just, made me a little bit speechless, it really has. And then, just to make my day a little bit brighter, I got some book mail because the lovely Molly from Mind of Molly, she realised that my wish list was made back public again before I even posted about it anywhere. So, <laughs> because she had my wish list saved, she decided to send me something and, oh my goodness, it's just the sweetest thing. So, I'm glad I would open it. We haven't done an unboxing from my wish list for a very, very long time because it's been shut since March? February? I think I shut it after my birthday, so been quite a while. So I don't know what this is, but apparently she got it because she saw it and it's a book that she loves. I don't know which book that is, so. Oh! <laughs> Yay! Oh my God. Okay, let me grab the note. <laughs> So the note inside says, Mwahaha, I caught your wish list being open. I love this book, I love you. I wanted to get you a little something just to say how glad I am to have a friend like you, Faye Angel, <laughs> from Molly. And as you just saw, she got me Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is one I've had my eye on for the longest time, but I've not allowed myself to buy it because I haven't yet read Gods of Jade and Shadow, which I already own. Obviously over October and just general Halloween vibes, I've been really wanting gothic stories and they are the ones I lean more towards. So I put it on my wish list quite a while ago and it's finally in my hands. So this one, I honestly don't know too much about it besides it being gothic, but it says, when glamorous socialite Naomi receives a frantic letter from her newlywed cousin begging to be rescued from a mysterious doom, it's clear something is desperately amiss. You don't see. <laughs> Catalina has always had a flair for the dramatic, but her claims that her husband is poisoning her and her visions of restless ghosts sound remarkable, even for her. Naomi's gowns and perfect lipsticks are more suited to cocktail parties than amateur sleuthing, but she immediately heads to High Place, a remote mansion in Mexican countryside, determined to discover what is so affecting her cousin. Tough and smart, she possesses an indomitable will, and she is not afraid. Not of her cousin's new husband, who is both menacing and alluring. Not of his father, the ancient patriarch who seems to be fascinated by Naomi. And not of the house itself, which begins to invade Naomi's dreams with visions of blood and doom. Her only ally in this inhospitable abode is the family's youngest son. Shy and gentle, he wants to help, but he might also be hiding dark knowledge of his family's past, for there are many secrets behind the walls of High Place. The family's once colossal wealth and fading mining empire kept them from prying eyes. But as Naomi digs deeper, she unearths stories of violence and madness. And Naomi, mesmerized by the terrifying yet seductive world of High Place, may soon find it impossible to leave this enigmatic house behind. Ooh. I have seen some mixed reviews of this book, but people whose opinions generally line up with mine have come out positive. So I am pretty much convinced that I'm going to love this book. I am really intrigued about it because people say it's weird. And whenever people claim something is weird, I'm like, how? How weird are we talking? <laughs> so I'm gonna find out. And that is very much thanks to Molly. So thank you so, so much Molly for sending this my way. <laughs> and just because you said I can't yell at you for getting something off my wish list, I'm giving you the eyes, okay? <laughs> I do also have updates on my reading, but I'm going to save those for after the live show because my camera battery is currently flashing at me rather rudely, so I better go and charge that before it cuts me off, but I shall be back. Hello, hello, it is Saturday evening. I feel like I haven't really vlogged too much, but I've just been doing stuff, you know? I am, however, here to give you a reading update because I am currently 245 pages into Madship, which did I even tell you I was reading this? I'm reading this. <laughs> I am glad to say, however, that this is going much better than book one because where book one was just pure depression and sadness and upset 
and pain. <laughs> this one, we still have that, but on a lesser note, like there's more happening than just pain. Granted, there is lots of pain still, but there's more and we are learning more about the world, about what's going on. There's lots of political things going on, which happened in the first book as well, but I think because all of the things that were problems in the first book are being worked towards in this one. We have a bit more than just problems, if that makes sense. We have a lot more going on. We have a lot of character building already and I have been tapping it. And as you can see, there are quite a lot of tabs in this already. My favorite character is Ophelia, who is a ship. She's just my favorite thing and I'm scared because <laughs> she's already not had some good stuff happen to her. And I feel like she's too good of a character to not go through immense pain at some point so if my throat sounds weird it's because i've spent the entire evening singing along to karaoke on youtube in which there is a guy standing in as the guy parts so i've just been belting high school musical basically if you ever wonder if i like living alone take this as your answer <laughs> I've been having a great time, but back to the book. I'm finding this quicker to read, but I could not tell you why. I think it is just because of the general mood of it. I'm not necessarily reading one chapter and then thinking, I need a break. <laughs> I need happiness and cheeriness back into my life. So I can actually read more than one chapter at once with this one, which is very good for me because the chapters in this are long. So I'm enjoying this one more than the first book already, which is interesting because I didn't dislike the first book, but I was really unsure about it. So this one, I can definitely tell I am enjoying it at least, which is always a good sign. And I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes because this is just huge. So. <laughs> I cannot predict where the story is going. I can, however, get very excited about the dragon that is mentioned on the front. And there's this whole linking to the first series. So the Assassin's Apprentice, what's it called? Farsia trilogy. There are links to that because they are in the same world. And every time we see a hint towards that or some kind of world building that connects them all together, I just get really, really excited. I cannot wait for the live show we do for this because I feel like we're going to have so many theories, especially with this being the second book, because we'll know enough to theorize solidly, but we will have a whole other book left to actually come to conclusions. So I think it's going to be really fun to talk about. So this one's going really well so far and I'm very, very glad for that. I haven't actually read anything yet today because I have been working on videos. I edited two videos. I was off to a slow start this morning because I felt ill. So I didn't really do anything up until lunchtime. Edited two videos, had my good old sing along for the evening, watched some true crime videos on YouTube, and now I'm here chatting to you guys. So I'm going to do a bit more video stuff because I feel a bit restless, a bit too restless to read. So I'll continue working for a bit and then I will inevitably get back to this. I am reading along with the audiobook, by the way. I really, really enjoy it, so yeah. and I have obviously come to wrap up this vlog but not before I read an update because I've actually read quite a lot and I'm surprised I can't quite believe it because I'm actually on track sounds fake but okay it's not very often that I make a reading plan and then actually stick to it so 
I spent most of today doing my uni reading, which was an Ephesian tale. It wasn't too long, but it did take me quite a while to read just because I was annotating so much of it. I was making notes along the way. I'm finding it really difficult to actually say my thoughts to you guys about these novels because all three that I've read so far follow a very similar pattern, which is probably a big contributing factor to why they're all within this one bind up, but they are all about a couple fall in love at the beginning, go through this period of just suffering through their love before getting married and then inevitably getting kidnapped by pirates. <laughs> Along the way, they end up getting separated. They will go to a whole host of different countries and just go through a lot of trials and tribulations before, you know, the outcome happens. They all quite literally follow that exact same pattern, but in slightly different ways. So one of them has this whole court scene, for instance, where they have to decide if the marriage is still worthy. One of them has a happily ever after. One of them, what happened in the other one? Well, the other one just abruptly ended. There just wasn't an ending to it. It was really strange. Obviously, I'm not going to tell you which one's which out of the three I have read because spoilers if anybody wants to read them, but they all follow a really, really similar path, which means that I'm struggling to form separate thoughts beyond them without comparing it to the other ones or without it just being related to university. So I am going to work on that in time for my wrap up. I just haven't actually gotten around to writing down my thoughts in my reading journal, which is right here. So I might actually do that this evening if I have time. Catch it up in the reading journal. I need to write down quite a few books actually because falling behind. So yes, yeah, so I did my uni reading. I read three different articles related to it, did my uni work in terms of writing up something for the discussion board that we have. And then I tidied my house. So I tidied the office room, which has been needing to be sorted for ages. I did start it a couple of weeks ago, but never quite got around to it. So I sorted that out. And then I also cleaned my bathroom all while listening to an audiobook. And I am now just under halfway through Mad Ship, which I am so thrilled about that I'm actually not that far from being halfway through because I scheduled in two weeks of reading this book because obviously it's massive and I'm not gonna read it that quickly. But in my head, I wanted to have this done within this week and next week. So I'm pretty much on track for doing that. And I really hope I stay on track because that would just be great if I could do that. I have so many books that I want to get to, but I have uni reading, book club reads, and I'm on a pretty tight schedule for the rest of the year, basically. <laughs> but for my actual thoughts on said book, I am finding this much more entertaining to read. And I think I said that before in my last update, but it's not annoying me as much. It is, there's one character who just grates on me, but I do find their perspective really, really interesting because there's so many different ways it could go wrong, so drastically wrong, because this one character thinks that they're smarter than they are. And it's really frustrating to read because they just keep messing everything up by thinking that they're being intelligent and it's just like, stop. <laughs> but unlike with the previous book, it is the kind of annoying which isn't angering me too much because <laughs> with the first book there is a character who just infuriated me so much that I didn't want to pick up the book because it was just I knew I would be raging I would just be sat there pure raging <laughs> while reading which meant that I didn't want to read it this one is not so bad and there was actually I've just read a scene with that character which instantly made another character one of my favourites because I'm like, that is such a mood. I also wanted to do that. <laughs> this is probably really confusing for anybody who hasn't read this book. So I'm like, there's this character and this character and this character, but I don't want to spoil it, obviously. I am, however, finding it really interesting because we have more avenues opening in terms of dragons and sea serpents and we also have this really interesting almost revolution happening amongst Bingtown which is the main trading town in this book. It's like the stirrings or the beginnings of a revolution of sorts if it does turn out that way. I honestly could not predict anything that happens and I do keep saying that because as much as it looks like it's going one way something that is just completely unexpected will happen and completely throw me off so Yes, very much enjoying this one. I am finding it much easier to read because I'm not just infuriated all the way through and, you know, putting off reading it. So that is proven to be a good sign. So hopefully I will continue making good progress at next week with this one. Do I have anything else to update you on before I leave? Oh, I do, I do. Hang on, I completely forgot, hang on. <laughs> okay, I'm back. I have to go and get them because I just keep forgetting to mention this. 
actually in a vlog, but at the minute I currently have a Patreon offer on, which is a Christmas offer. Yes, it is early, but that's because I need to ship something out. So if you guys don't already know, I do have a Patreon and there's different tiers, but the basic sense of it is that if you join, you get to choose what tier you're on. There is an exclusive book club in which you guys will choose what I get to read during two months. And obviously you'll get to join in. We do have a private discord and I will upload a video at the end of every two month period with a spoiler review of the book and also just behind the scenes, what's going on, any upcoming plans, that kind of thing. And then if you're in the higher tier, you also get invited to a monthly live show. But I do have a new tier, which is slightly more expensive for £15, which has all of that, as well as a couple of things I've created. Now, I don't know if anybody remembers, but back over summer, I was actually planning on opening an Etsy store. Now, this is something that I've thought of multiple times, and unfortunately, it won't be happening anytime soon. I did get the closest I had ever been to actually doing it this year, but then I got a job <laughs> and I also became self-employed and I also started a master's degree so time non-existent but I had already drawn out a couple of things and it just seemed a waste to have them sitting on my laptop not doing anything so I decided to make a Christmas offer in which people if they sign up to the highest tier which is £15 or the equivalent in your currency you will get all of the previous things I've just mentioned but also an exclusive Patreon print and bookmark designed by me. <laughs> so these are the things, this is the print, as you can see it is an A5 print with this little baby dragon. I am so very fond of this tiny dragon, it was the very first thing I drew. And as you can see there are faint stars in the background and his little snoot is just a boop and a star. And then I also have this bookmark which is one of my favourite things. <laughs> which may sound very egotistical but it just came out so much better than I thought it would in terms of colours and everything. Again we have all of the stars going up and this is double-sided so. So if you are interested in looking a bit more into how you would join this I do have all of the information on my Patreon so I will leave a link to that down below. Please if you are looking into it make sure that you read through all of the information on the actual tier because it's very different, it's not just like a one buy and then you leave situation unless you actively do that because Patreon is like a subscription or a membership. So that price will come out again unless you actively cancel it after your payment has been taken out. There's going to be plenty of reminders, it sounds really scary and it's not the ideal platform for me to do things like this but it does mean that everybody who joins do get to have the previous benefits that I've just mentioned with the live shows and the book clubs and whatnot. It also saves me from having to set up a whole Etsy store for the sake of two items that would have a very limited run so yeah this is the way I've gone about it and I know it's not ideal but I hope that if you are interested you will at least go and check it out because I'm really proud of them I'm happy of how they came out and it's just surreal to me that people in the world will actually have some element of my artwork like that's just baffling to me to see it as actual things like these I created this it's just mind-blowing to me. <laughs> also on the Patreon note, I never actually announced what the November to December book is because I would usually do that in my TBR but I filmed my TBR before the poll was actually finished so if you are one of my patrons or if you are considering joining the November to December book club book is... oh it's up there <laughs> I don't want to grab it. It's The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson and I'm so so glad for this because I really wanted to read this in October but I just didn't have the time to. It sounds incredible so I will likely be reading this in December and oh my god I'm just I'm so excited too and it won I think both Goodreads awards it was up for which is just incredible. So this book is actually about a girl who lives in a small town in which I think a priest at some point managed to banish witches from the land. Now the girl that we follow, I think she's called Emmanuel, she is lured to this nearby forest where the witches are actually buried. She meets the ghosts of the witches who hand her the diary of her dead mother and when she starts reading this diary she comes across lots of different secrets that inevitably link her to the witches and I'm just so so intrigued because people have been saying that this is incredibly atmospheric, that it's one of the best books they've read this year and it's been one of my anticipated releases for at least a year and a half. I can't remember when it was announced but the second I saw it I was like 
yes. <laughs> Very thankful to my patrons for choosing this one for me and obviously for yourselves if you are one of them and you're reading along. And of course all of you will be seeing my thoughts on this one as I read it. So yeah, I have some good reads upcoming. I need to still finish reading The Mask Fall and I have had to pause that just because I have so many different things happening at the minute <laughs> but I'm really eager to get back to it. I also have a few different review books coming up which look exciting. Oh I don't know if any of you have seen but if you haven't myself and Becca will be hosting a live show with KJ Sutton who is the author of Fortuna Swan which if you have been here since maybe summertime? I can't remember when I actually read Fortuna Swan but it was one of my new favourite books of this year. In fact both of the books are. It's a fairy romance and it's just, oh it's so good. I'll leave a link to the vlog in which I read the first book down below because if I start going off talking about it now <laughs> this vlog will just double in size but it's one of my new favourite series. I am 100% going to keep up with them as they're coming out because currently I'm on track. Granted there's only two books out so far but the third is coming out in December and myself and Becca will be doing a live show with KJ Sutton. We're going to keep it spoiler free because this is about the third book in the series and we don't want to like exclude people who haven't read it yet and stuff like that so we will keep it spoiler free and you can tune in if you haven't read them. And that will be on December 1st I believe at 9pm GMT. I'll put the graphic up on the screen that Becca's made so you can have a look at that and also a link to her tweet which has all the information and stuff and I'll also leave a link to the actual live show itself so that you can set a reminder if you want to. I feel like I've just ended this vlog on a big like announcement spree that I didn't even intend but <laughs> it's been one of those weeks which has felt like two weeks because so many different things have happened and it's just I can't even remember. I genuinely had to think to myself did I start this this week? Have I actually managed to read half of it in a week? Because I couldn't remember when Monday was. <laughs> it took me so long to piece together what happened this week that this has happened apparently. So I don't know what this week has been. I don't know what this vlog will be, but hopefully you enjoyed it. I've messed up my outro by saying that. Okay, right. Let's go again. So I'm going to end this vlog here. Of course, you will be seeing me soon again on Friday. I believe it's a classics book recommendation that's coming up on Friday so keep an eye out for that one but in the meantime I hope you enjoyed this video if you did then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here if you're not subscribed already then please consider doing so down in the description box you'll find information to all of the books I've mentioned all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well so be sure to check that out if you haven't already but for now I hope you have a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video bye